Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Wadier. And I'm Tommy Welling, and you're listening to the Fasting for Life podcast. This podcast is about using fasting as a tool to regain your health, achieve ultimate wellness, and live the life you truly deserve. Each episode is a short conversation on a single topic with immediate actionable steps. We cover everything from fat loss and health and wellness to the science of lifestyle design. We started Fasting for Life because of how fasting has transformed our lives, and we hope to share the tools that we have learned along the way. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Fasting for Life podcast. My name is Dr. Scott Wadier, and I'm here, as always, with my good friend and colleague, Tommy Welling. Good afternoon to you, sir. Hey, Scott. How are you? Doing fantastic, my friend. We are... Going to have an incredible conversation today. I feel mm. confident in that as this is um, something that we've gotten a lot of questions about. And it is something that really speaks to both of our intentions with why we fast and why we started this whole fasting for life thing. So I'm excited about today, Tommy. If you're new to the podcast, go back to episode 100. And I can't believe we have, I don't even know what episode this is, but we're past the century mark. And it's incredible. So episode 100 is a place, almost like a starting place where you can go back, Mm -hmm. you can get the highlights and the motivation, but also some of the most impactful episodes that we've gotten feedback on and kind of give you the basics of who we are and what we do. If you want to hear our story, you can go all the way back to the first couple of episodes uh, with Grace, of course, um, and get a little bit more insight into who we are and into our fasting journey. And today's conversation, Tommy, really hits home with, you know, only certainly my personal journey, my family's journey, uh, and the journey of so many of you listeners and people that we've helped along the way. So I'm Mm -hmm. excited to break down the complexity of metformin versus berberine. And if those words are new to you, uh, metformin is the starting place for a lot of people when they end up with a symptom and they end up going to the doctor and having some blood work done. And then it comes back that you have a cholesterol or a blood pressure issue, as well as a fasting blood glucose test that comes back high, that puts you in the pre-diabetes range. And then your option, the number one option is to be offered or to be put on a medication called metformin. Yeah. And, and usually along with that recommendation, you might be hearing about what's what's next, what's further down the line, right? And then if and when these parts of your blood work or these symptoms continue to progress, then there will probably be multiple other medications added on top of it, right? Like it, it's the, it's the first step in a potential cascade, right? Yeah. It's one of the things that we'd like to talk about is the reversal concept and, and we really want to look at like this reversal, right? So when you, if you have a blood sugar related issue or you have metabolic syndrome, you know, you get the, the, the recommendations to your point, Tommy, of, all right, eat healthy foods. Okay. Well, what does that look like? Uh, be more active, eat less, move more, uh, right. lose the excess weight, right? So five to 7% of your body weight is about 14 pounds. If you're 200 pounds and get, get into a healthier range. Right. And mm-hmm. we know just by looking around that that's not what's happening. We're moving in the opposite direction. By 2030, 86% of the United States population is going to be uh, overweight and or obese. Uh, we're approaching that 40% obesity mark. And then they'll tell you to stop smoking. And then the medication conversation that you've alluded to and that we've mentioned is, okay, well, when typically what we'll hear in the thousands of patient interactions that I've had in new consults and patient new patient consultations is, well, okay, doc, well, what are my options? Okay, well, we just listed them. But okay, when I get on the medication, do I ever get off of it? Mm-hmm. And there doesn't seem to be an end point. And a lot of people will exhibit frustration of being stuck or just think that this is your only option. And it's just frustrating. And this has been in, in my personal experience as well, but also with my dad is like, okay, so what are the options? Are there other options out there? What is metformin doing? What's it working on? And is this helping me undo the problem that I actually have, which is a blood sugar or metabolic related issue? And the answer mm-hmm. in the short term is no, it's managing the symptom. It's not increasing the efficacy. There's, I've never heard someone say, yeah, I got on metformin, I lost weight and I reversed my diabetes. 
Yeah. No, or I've pre-diabetes, excuse mm-hmm. me. Yeah, I've, ne- I've also never heard that. Um, what I have heard people say is, hey, this fasting thing seems really, really powerful. I'm starting it. I'm liking it. I'm seeing the scale move, but I don't know how to do this now that I'm on metformin. So I almost feel like, ah, uh, I like, I, I see the solution, but I'm, I don't think I can do this because I, I think the two are incompatible. Like w- what should I do about that? Yeah. And this, that's, that's great. So I wanted to mention this in the beginning and I completely forgot our next challenge is coming up on February 23rd. And you just reminded me of that conversation when we get the messages saying, Hey, I'm a diabetic. I'm a pre-diabetic. I've been fasting for a while. Can I do this challenge because of my medication? Like, mm. is this safe for me to do? So are we saying in this moment, cause we're going to unpack the incredible benefits of berberine and we're going to outline and unpack the metformin uh, mechanism, what it's doing, how berberine is similar, the side effects of both. And in the short term, our takeaway message is that berberine, not just for diabetics or pre-diabetics in the short term has a great effect without the side effects compared to the standard operating procedure uh, Mm -hmm. in the medical system when you get some blood work done and your blood sugar is elevated. So, and that medication conversation happens. So the challenge is coming up on the 23rd. You can go to www.thefastingforlife.com forward slash live. And that starts uh, February 23rd. It runs through March 1st. More information and details, just click the link. It'll bring you to a registration page. It'll have all the bullet points and information. Get signed up. Don't miss out on that, Tommy. And that reminds me of um, a testimonial that we just had come through. And a lot of you that might be listening to this say, well, I don't, you know, I haven't had to get to this point yet, or I I have the elevated blood pressure, or my cholesterol numbers look off, my triglycerides are high, my LDL is uh, high, my HDL is low, the good and bad cholesterol, right? Yeah. And I haven't really gotten to this point, but if your fasting blood sugar is elevated above 100 in that range of 100 to 125, and your A1C is elevated, Mm -hmm. right, above the 5.5 mark, then you're going to be in that that category of this is an eventual conversation if you don't do something different. Right, 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 right. If things are trending in the wrong direction, it's it's time to start pushing that, pushing those numbers in the right direction now. And that's right. that's kind of how you get the the process started. And um, like you know, for the testimonial that that came in, that that process for for Robert started with the challenge, right? It did. It did. So man, just incredible. So it, this post just came up recently. I, I'm so glad that this came up in like real time. Right. It was, uh, we use the term hashtag NSV during our challenges, right? So it's hashtag non-scale victory. Cause it's not about yeah. the weight loss. It's about the health. Right. And yeah, uh, Robert has a cool story. Cause at one point, um, you know, joining back last summer, it was, you know, he had, he had had some success with fasting and he was doing great. And all of a sudden he just got, got in the group and just absolutely crushed it and had a couple of stumbling blocks along the way, you know, being a part of continuity, you know, over the months had a couple of plateaus that we worked through, but you know, we, we watched him at one point donate, like I'll I'll say a a badass amount of, of clothing (laughs) to a local uh, charity. And it was really cool to see that post. So let's share a little bit about that. And then we'll, we'll talk about his most recent update. Yeah. I mean, as, as he kind of started going through the challenge and like the ahas were just kind of hitting him like, wow, I, I, I can do this. I can do something incredible here. Things are happening. The scale is continuing to move over the weeks and then eventually uh, months into the process. And then just donating the, this, this, these awesome um, pieces of clothing, these, these cool suits. It was, it was like so 30 many of them. them too. Yeah. So many, like thousands of dollars, you know, worth of, worth of old, clothes that, you know, he was like, these are never going to fit again. I don't ever want to, to even try to live into this old version of myself right here. I'm going to kick the door down on this whole thing. And, and I'm, I'm going to give these to somebody else. And so that was cool. And that was just part of his, his, like his transformation right there. Yeah. So he popped up recently on the newsfeed and said, hashtag NSV, my endocrinologist. So if you're listening to this conversation, you've had these conversations with your doctor about metformin, you're on metformin, it's been offered to you. Uh, even if you have PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, metformin mm-hmm. is, is is one of the typical uh, treatment options in the beginning. And you know, he says, you know, I walk my, my endocrinologist walk endocrinologist walks in today and says, "Holy moly, you don't need me anymore." I was so <laughs> proud and thankful. And not only that, she said she is actually recommending you and I, Tommy, in our podcast, which yeah, floored nice. me <laughs> to her clients that don't seem to be improving. And that's where 
you know, it came from with Dr. Fung's realization of being, you know, a nephrologist and seeing these treatments that weren't getting his patients any better. Right? Right, right. So she even said, this is a quote from his endocrinologist. It's simple. Just stop eating. Right. And he has been completely released from his endocrinologist. And he gives us a shout out um, and big thanks to us. And I'm just, you know, so grateful, Robert, that you heard the message you bought in and you literally are a, a completely different person on a completely different path now. And that is the reason you and I started this, Tommy, because that's what fasting has done for us. And we're going to get back yeah. into the, the unpacking of metformin and berberine here in a second, but just really, really cool to see. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, from his endocrinologist perspective, I wouldn't be surprised if she was so surprised because she sees these types of transformations so seldomly right. with, within the, the patient population. It's just, it's just not normally part of the equation. That's how it was when I used to ask physicians about this, like, can't, can't these problems just be fixed if, if the weight comes off a lot of times they say, well, yeah, but it just doesn't very often happen. And that's, that's the issue. So understanding that it is possible and there are steps to take to actually get there, I think is incredibly empowering. And, um, and, and that's why I wanted to have this conversation. So this brings me back to the conversation that I had with my dad you know, when he originally bought into the challenge a couple of years ago, and this is very early on before we even started doing some of these programs and, mm -hmm. um, you know, guiding people through the process of how to reverse blood sugar related issues, how to decrease your blood pressure, how to decrease your inflammation, how to literally get your health back, which is what yeah. fasting did for us, Tommy. But my dad's uh, HbA1c, um, and he was on, uh, you know, 17 medications, and I won't go into the whole story, we do an entire uh, you know, episode on my dad's story and his journey. Yeah. But if you have that 5.5 to 5.7 A1C, you're going to be elevated like right at the risky stage. And then from 5.7 right. to plus six to 6.5, you're going to be in that pre-diabetes metabolic syndrome uh, type stage where you're going to see the blood numbers ticking up over the years, the cholesterol, the the triglycerides, the blood pressure, those types of things. Mm -hmm. um, you might have some alterations in your, in your liver enzymes and your kidney function enzymes and whatnot. But then when you get over that 6.5 number, you know, now you're in the, in the diabetic range and that this becomes a reality, right? So it's been cool to see that I've been able to log into my dad's portal and over the years. So his A1C was up in the nines. And yeah. then that was on 120 units of insulin, 17 medications, multiple blood sugar medications. He was on, you know, uh, high dose metformin. And even with the medication, that number was not coming down. So then fasting began. And this comes to the point of the question. He was like, well, what do I do about my medications? So on days that you're fasting, then your blood sugar is going to be pushed down due to the, the blood, showing, blood sugar lowering medications. Mm -hmm. Hypoglycemia is a concern for diabetics because it has been given to them in the, in, in, in the eye, in the light of it being a fearful thing. Like you really need to watch out about this, right? You have to, yeah, eat, snack, yeah, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Hypoglycemia does not happen normally without diabetic lowering medications or some rare tumor, right? We've said this before, right. some insulinoma, some insulin producing tumor, right? Now this is type two diabetics we're talking about. So when you start fasting, it's like, well, what do I do? How do I manage? Do I just not take my medication that day? And you and I are never going to tell you the listener to stop taking their medication. Right. But I will tell you that that's what my dad did is on the days that he started doing his longer fast, he didn't take the medications because his body didn't need it. He didn't need it. Mm -hmm. And that's where I feel like berberine can come in as a support mechanism for, let's say 60 to 90 days to really help add some substantial support in terms of balancing out those physiological processes that isn't going to end up with you being in the place that you're stuck having metformin as your only option. Um, and we'll unpack some of those side effects here compared to what berberine can do. And then again, it's a short term solution for a long term goal where metformin is a, is just kind of the, the new normal, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. And like uh, a lot of people who, who start fasting, who, who send us a message or who ask the, the question, like coming into a challenge, like, is this going to be okay for me to do? It's because they've already tried fasting, but with the blood sugar lowering medication, they've, they've found that they've had to break their fast because mm -hmm. they, they didn't know that there was any other way to kind of do it. So I, I just had to break my fast. So I, I must not be fasting. So I must not be able to fast is kind of like 
the mental progression that happens right. right there. And then you can quickly just eliminate fasting as, as one, as your, your potential solution for this issue, even though, you know, you might have 40 or 80 or a hundred plus pounds that you need to lose. And if you did lose it, you could, you could probably fix a lot of these issues that are going on, but you don't know how to get there because you, you're, you're painted into a corner at that point. And the number one, uh, you know, thing is lose weight, eat healthier, right? Yeah. As well as, okay. Yeah. You can use metformin to help balance the blood sugar. So let's unpack what metformin is, what berberine is. It's a, it's a supplement or a nutraceutical versus metformin, which is a pharmaceutical Yeah. and unpack the side effects. And Tommy, I'll have you do the side effects of berberine, but Mm. the side effects of metformin and what the risk reward is. And then the cool thing is, is that berberine and metformin act in a very similar physiological way. And metformin is very complex. So it acts in the liver to lower glucose production. It acts in the gut to increase glucose utilization Mm -hmm. and increase the GLP-1 pathway, which is insulin sensitivity, which is the good thing. We don't want insulin resistance, which leads to diabetes and all the comorbidities and complications of metabolic syndrome um, and heart diseases and all the things that come with being a pre-diabetic or a diabetic over the years. So at a molecular level, we're going to be looking at the mitochondria, and the respiratory chain in the liver. But really, there's these two different pathways in the body, the AMPK pathway and the the mTOR pathway. So lowercase mTOR pathway. And we want to be focusing on which metformin and berberine do, which is stimulating the AMPK pathway, which is going to increase insulin sensitivity in, in, in the long term. So when we're looking at the difference between these two, you know, these are two sides of the metabolism equation, right? So mm-hmm. I'll unpack this. We'll go over the the um, the side effects, Tommy, and then we'll talk. Uh, we'll have you unpack the berberine side, right? So, yeah, AMPK pathway detects that our energy is down, right? And then we have a deficiency in energy, and it stimulates the oxidation of fatty acids in the muscle and liver, improving insulin resistance. So that's a good mm-hmm. thing and glucose entry into the muscle, which inhibits your triglycerides. So perfect. triglycerides are high, cholesterol is high, good cholesterol is low, bad cholesterol is high, et cetera, blood pressure is high. Those are all some of the, the things that we'll see kind of in part of the things in this equation. Overactivation of the mTOR pathway, which is what happens when you eat, right? And you consume, mm-hmm. it's a an anabolic pathway, which is a building pathway. And it leads to insulin resistance, diabetes, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and among other diseases. So we want to be- yeah. With fasting, we can decrease the amount of mTOR times that we stimulate mTOR. We can increase the AMPK pathway with fasting. And that is actually what berberine and metformin do is they stimulate the AMPK pathway, which is a positive thing. However, metformin comes with a list of risks, which is the most common ones are lactic acidosis, diarrhea, nausea, nausea and vomiting, vomiting, flatulence, asthenia, and decreased vitamin B12, which can lead to anemia. So there's a lot of words in there. So I want to unpack just a couple. Asthenia is weakness, literally getting weak. So if you're told that you need to go exercise more and get and and put out more energy, yet the medication is actually causing less energy through Mm -hmm. vitamin B12 pathways, which can lead to anemia and also asthenia, then you're actually kind of like shooting yourself in the foot. Never mind right. the the common ones are abdominal discomfort, diarrhea, decreased appetite, uh, low back pain, muscle pain, and cramping, sleepiness. Then you've got anxiety, cold sweats, coma, confusion, depression, dizziness. These are some of the more less common ones. Yeah. Increased hunger, sweating, seizures, shakiness. They even list death on here. Not oh, to be wow. not to be you know spouting fear tactics here, but if you had an option to get the same positive effect, right? So lactic acidosis is a buildup of lactic acid in your body if you're not getting enough oxygen, right? So anemia, not carrying enough oxygen through your bloodstream. The, all of these things can be a side effect of metformin. Now, I don't know about you, but a lot of the people I talk to and my dad, these are not things that are gone over with, it's like, oh, go home and read the yeah. side effects. Well, I don't right. know a lot of people that actually do that. So juxtaposing this, right? The benefit metformin does have a physiological benefit of stimulating AMPK pathway compared to what berberine does with its side effects. Yeah. I think there's going to be some ahas here in just a moment. Yeah. And like the, the, the side effect list of berberine is, um, 
diarrhea, constipation, gas, and upset stomach. Um, so it's a it's a lot shorter of a list for sure. And um, you know, to to dive into some of the research articles and to see that the positive effect of berberine right. is is oftentimes as great or greater than the effects of metformin on those key blood markers on blood pressure, on triglycerides, on the LDL, HDL, fasting glucose, to, to, to see that and to go, well, there's a substantial chance for, for improvement here with something that has a, a much, much lower toxicity level is, is incredibly empowering to use as a, as a supplemental tool um, you know, during, during a weight loss and a fasting journey, that's for sure. Yeah, and this is a short-term thing too, right? So a couple of the studies that you're referencing, Tommy, and I'll, I'll let you list off some of the benefits here is efficacy of berberine in patients with type 2 diabetes. This was published in the journal Metabolism in 2000, May of 2008. There's also the metformin and berberine, two versatile drugs in treatment of common metabolic diseases. I don't like the terminology drugs there. It's a nutraceutical, not a pharmaceutical. Oncology target, uh, 2018, February 9, 2018. Um, and there's a bunch more you know, positive you know, studies out there about what berberine is. The only concern is that that digestive change. And that really comes from, and you can think about this, if you've ever used creatine and weightlifting, there's a loading mm -hmm. fit, like you got to be sensitive with creatine. Like you got to start and kind of build up your tolerance. If your digestive does digestive changes do happen. Yeah. So the same thing is with berberine, you know, so, uh, berberine, uh, up to 1500 milligrams a day. So 500 milligrams, one to three times a day. And the supplement that I personally have used and I'm currently using, because I'm going through kind of a testing protocol, almost like being a little guinea pig right now. And we're going to share those results with you coming up in the next, uh, you know, couple of months here. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is, is that you can take the berberine slowly. Like you don't have to start with going all the way up to the, the, the mm -hmm. highest amount that shows a, a benefit. So you can actually start with saying 500 milligrams once a day. And then right now I'm taking 500 milligrams two times a day. I've never mm -hmm. had any digestive changes with it, but your body will adapt to it. And those symptoms should decrease. Yeah. And um, the cool thing was in, in some of the studies where they did find some of those gastrointestinal um, changes, um, just lowering the dose um, a bit was still very effective on those key markers, but then uh, took away the, the gastrointestinal upset. So it's, it's, there's, there's so much promise there. It, it's it's just really cool to see that there there is another option to to kind of help um, yeah you know support that that journey. So what are some of the benefits and the stats? Because we pulled out. I mean, Tommy. I mean, holy moly! Like you went in and pulled out a bunch of the stats, and you sent me these over, and I was like, okay, there's like 75 bullet points, <laughs> right? Just yeah. from a couple of the articles that we pulled, you know, knowing that now the mechanism is the same. We've talked about the side effects uh, and the potential side effects, but then the benefits are huge. In that uh, berberine seems to have additional benefits that metformin does not, right? Mm -hmm. As well as some of the stats from some of these studies is just really cool to see. Yeah, it absolutely is. So you know you have a lowering of uh, HbA1c, fasting and postprandial glucose, like after actually um, after breaking our fast after eating, seven to eleven percent decrease in a matter of of weeks, not months, too. And and these effects come on fairly fairly quickly through the process and you have a uh, lowering of, of LDL, LDLC, just non HDL, uh, cholesterol, you have, uh, up to a 45% reduction between humans and rat studies, um, across a matter of two to three months. So rat a tat tat here, lowering a one C lowering fasting glucose, lowering postprandial glucose, meaning post meal, which means your insulin sensitivity has gone up, decreasing blood pressure, has an effect of anti-heart failure, anti-hypertension, anti-hyperlipidemia, so anti-high blood pressure, so lowering blood pressure, anti-increased lipids, right? So lower cholesterol, the, 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 the bad one, right? Air quotes, bad cholesterol, increasing, uh, decreasing resistance, uh, anti-arrhythmias, because that was something that we saw with potential heart complications with the metformin side of things. So just overall, a, a really cost-benefit ratio here comparing the two encouraging everyone that you do have an option and that, you know, we, when we, in the clinical side of things, Tommy, you know, with the clinics that I work with, we are non-narcotic, non-surgical based pain relief centers. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we say is you can always go and have the surgery, but let's try to do a few things first 
before you eventually have it because then you can't undo it. And that's typically what we see in knee pain patients is that their functionality goes up, but their pain level only decreases incrementally post knee replacement. So they still end up with the same pain level or a similar pain level, but they do have more strength and functionality, but that's not Mm -hmm. what a lot of people have knee surgery for. It's to reduce the pain. So just looking at that cost benefit that you do have an option, I always like to say, well, let's try this first and we can always then introduce a pharmaceutical or a procedure, right? So really cool to see that uh, the studies and the efficacy of berberine are starting to become uh, exposed or brought to light. And a lot of these studies you mentioned to me are not coming from the US. They're coming from overseas. They're coming from China. They're coming from Japan. They're coming from the UK. Yeah. Um, because here in the States, we rely heavily on, you know, one of only two countries in the world that, you know, has pharmaceutical ads on local TV, right? Like they're literally right. marketing into our homes. So we want to make sure that we have options on reversal of these things and not just management of the symptoms while the disease just continues to process. Yeah, it's, it's it's cool. I'm glad you brought up that perspective because berberine has been used for literally thousands of years in right. other countries. Like it, there's there's so much anecdotal data, but it, it's it's nice to see in in the past few decades actually putting some rigorous science to it and starting to go, okay, well, what what is happening here? Why is it working? How safe is this over over long periods of time? And you know, might there be a different solution for folks who who are are battling with insulin resistance, weight loss resistance, can't get the weight off? Starting to see those numbers, like we've alluded to several times, you know, to start to tick up. What else can be done to to actually get at the problem here? Yeah, and just one more stat I want to share. It was a, a decreased uh, a thirty one, thirty six, and forty five percent decrease. Uh, and overall, lipid lowering effects of berberine sound more attractive than those conventional lipid lowering drugs because of its low toxicity. And a lot of the yeah. research that we saw, Tommy, that was we had this low toxicity thing come up where berberine acted similarly, had less side effects, and didn't have any toxic load on the body. So, mm-hmm. to wrap up today's to conversation, really, the last thing is really other ways you can stimulate the AMPK pathway, right? So, fasting, obviously, this is a fasting podcast blood sugar related health building, you know, framework that we want to continue to unpack over the weeks to months here is, um, you know, calorie restriction and fasting. Fasting is the easiest way to get into a a caloric deficit. We're not saying that calories are king, but we do need to take into the hormonal side of things, the insulin, the leptin side as well, which fasting also taps into. So Mm -hmm. that's one way. And then, you know, high intensity exercise is another. Berberine is on the list of supplements that can also do this, right? Um, we're going to do an entire, another podcast just on supplementation. We've got a lot of questions about it, high antioxidants, foods, and then, um, you know, also, uh, uh, cold therapy. So like, uh, cryotherapy, cold, cold submersions, uh, cold baths, uh, ice baths, those types of things as well. Yeah. And I, I feel like I would be remiss to, um, to point out the fact that just leveling up your own fasting is is one of those ways to kind of dial up yes you know, dial up the volume i obviously right? didn't say that clearly <laughs> ampk one of the easiest ways to stimulate ampk is through fasting yeah so wherever you are in your fasting level in your fasting journey right now getting to the next level like getting a little bit more weight off getting a, a little more comfortable with your fasting interval and getting disciplined, setting your own fasting timer. And, you know, if you can't break through that kind of intermittent fasting kind of level, consider joining the challenge because we, what we do is we take a lot of people from the beginner and the, the kind of intermediate stages and we, we get them leveled up so that they can take that and push further into their own fasting journey to start seeing new results. It's just, it's a really cool process. And, and I love the fact that like Robert looking back over the last like six months, seeing that sort of transformation happening and it all started within a challenge. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's, we've had berberine and metformin on our list of things to talk about, just like weight loss medications. And we have this running list of podcast topics based off of yeah. your questions and research and really just trying to continue to move the needle, right. And support the fasting lifestyle. Yeah. And one of the thing, the coolest things is that this lines right up with the start of the challenge. Cause one of the que- most common questions we get is, you know, I'm a diabetic or pre-diabetic or I'm on a medication. What do I do? Well, you have options and yeah. it is something that we definitely unpack and we can break through those plateaus, uh, in the seven day ramp up. So that's coming up. So as we always land the plane, Tommy, as we like to say, 
yeah. with an action step for the episode. One is going to be, uh, if you've been on the fence, uh, if this answers that question for you, then we're going to encourage you to sign up for the challenge, www.thefastingforlife.com forward slash live. Click the link. There's a registration page, has all the frequently asked questions, has the button to, to sign up, uh, gives you some con- mm-hmm. uh, some testimonials. You'll see some of that as well. And then if you are looking for additional support before the challenge starts, you can also check out the resources tab. We have a fast start guide which is six simple steps to put one meal a day fasting into your life, as well as an insulin assessment. If you're new to the concept of insulin resistance, this will give you some insights, some subjective insight into uh, whether or not this is part of your uh, you know, concern or why you're trying to lose the weight or get healthy. So Tommy, specifically for the berberine question, we're gonna get this question. We're gonna put a link so you can get the one that I typically use there's two different companies there. You'll see a link to that if you are mm-hmm. wanting to look into that further. Uh, but Tommy, as we wrap up today, any final thoughts? Yeah, final thought would be like just just get started. So if you've never yep. fasted before, set a timer and and just give yourself an eating window to get started. And if you're if you've already been doing that for a little while or you've you've tried that in the past, then take it a step further. Get the fast archive www.thefastingforlife.com and and get started with OMAD. Look at, at yep. putting putting your nutrition into one meal a day and see what kind of beneficial effects that has on your insulin, on the scale, and with with your own mindset to to, to push past into the next step of your fasting journey. Love it, absolutely love it, Tommy. As always, thank you for the conversation, sir. Thank you for your time, and we'll talk soon. Thank you. Bye. So you've heard today's episode and you may be wondering, where do I start? Head on over to thefastingforlife.com and sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive fasting tips and strategies to maximize results and fit fasting into your day-to-day life. While you're there, download your free fast start guide to get started today. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to leave us a five-star review, and we'll be back next week with another episode of Fasting for Life.